This is Positive Moments with Jean Walters Lucy, personal growth consultant, teacher, author, and lecturer. Hello, everybody. This is Positive Moments with Jean Walters Lucy. I'm Richard Miller, and today's show is called Commitment to Goals. And now, here's Jean. Clarity and vision are the result of focus, knowing what you want. If you are clear about your desires, commitment to achieving them is easy. A committed person does not waste time dwelling on negatives or condemning himself or others. He is occupied with the excitement of learning more and being alert to possibilities. He changes disasters into opportunities. An example of this approach is the printer who was set to run three million copies of Theodore Roosevelt's 1912 convention speech. To his consternation, he discovered that the necessary permission to use photos of Roosevelt had not been obtained, and under existing copyright laws, there were high penalties for not obtaining this permission. But the chairman of the campaign committee was undaunted. He had vision and turned a disadvantage in his favor by contacting the photographic studio that had taken the picture and offering them a publicity opportunity by displaying their photo in the printed material. The studio accepted the offer, and a disaster became an opportunity. True leaders take control in this manner. When things look glum, look for the opportunity to turn things around. By keeping your mind set firmly on your goal, you can respond the way the inventive chairman did. The idea is to remain calm. Then your options become clear. With patience and commitment, the path opens, moving you toward your objective. Commitment means making a promise. Make sure your promises are to yourself. If you do everything because you are keeping a personal commitment to yourself, you will not only reap rewards from your actions, but others will view you as dependable. On the other hand, if your promises are to others and you have not determined your benefits from a given action, there aren't any. The printer and the chairman knew what they wanted the distribution of Roosevelt's speech without fear of penalty. They took the necessary action to ensure reaching their goal. You can do the same. Do you know what you want? This is Jean Walters Lucy, personal growth consultant. And if you have a comment or question about this topic or any personal growth subject, I would really love to hear from you. You can reach me two different ways. One is you can email me through my website at spiritualtransformation.com or call me at 314-991-8439. Jean, we have a caller today, and her name is Pam. Pam, thank you so much for calling. What can I do for you? Well, I've been feeling um, stuck in, in that I have not been making any headway on my goals, and I have a hard time making decisions also. I was wondering, what can I do for that, or what do you suggest to help me get unstuck? Okay, well, it, first of all, you sound very conflicted, <laughs> even in your voice, <laughs> and, and I'm, it makes me wonder if you if you really do know what you want. If, if when you say that uh, you're getting, you feel stuck in reaching your goals. Are you sure you have the right goals, or w- do you have any kind of an inkling what, where your attention is, what's conflicting you so much? Um, is what you want what you really want? <laughs> I guess that's. I guess I'm not real clear then in what I want. I, I think something is what I want, and maybe not. Okay. It's maybe not that. Okay. I'm wondering if if you just don't, if you need to rethink your picture, you know, what's in your mind as your goal. If it might be, the the goal might be fine, but maybe you need to rethink the form of it or, you know, reframe it a little bit so that uh, maybe you have details with that goal that really don't fit the, the way it would work best for you. And um, and that's uh, one way to resolve conflict is to really think about what are the things in your life that seem to be, uh, you know, crashing into each other. How does one area of your life, you know, relationships, for instance, um, conflict with business or or uh, career? And then look at that more closely, and and then you might have to redefine what those goals are, or maybe do some um, talk to the people in your life and and you know, maybe work out a different arrangement with those people. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah. There's something active you can do here that can help you 
be clearer about your goals and then also settle some of these conflicts. Because if people are really loving you and supporting you, then they want you to have your goals too. They they, they want that for you because that's what love really is. So anyway, th- th- those are some thoughts. I, I would, Do you think you, you might yeah, be able to implement I, I, some of that? No, I, I, I think that would help me a lot. Okay, really great. Yeah. Is there anything else then? Um, no, I don't think so. I okay. think you really answered my question. Well, just take your time then. Be, be sure and take your time and, and, and give yourself time to get clear about all this because um, it's going to save you time later down the road if you do that. Okay. It, you know, you might end up creating what you want, what you think you want, and then you, then you end up having to redo it anyway. So, uh-huh. all right? Okay. Thanks a lot, Thank Pam. You. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Jean, sometimes it amazes me how little people know about themselves and how little they really know about what it is that they want. Yeah. They have this it, vague idea, I want to be happy. You know what, though? I, it does make sense to me that there are so many people that are conflicted like that because we were taught in our life so many things that are incorrect. I mean, we were taught to be good little girls and boys and to do what you're told and do what I want you to do and, and follow this format and and. Until we start questioning those things, we, we're not going to find who we are. We're not going to find out what really works for us. So, you know, that process of questioning starts at different t- times in people's lives. And But the only way you real, anyone can really be happy is to start meeting their own needs and getting clear about what it is that, that really feels wonderful to them. And we're all different. That's what's so wonderful and amazing about life is that we're all different um, so we want to embrace that and not fight it by any means. But that's what I see. I see a lot of people in conflict because they're trying to live a standard that that doesn't fit them at all. It doesn't belong to them. And not only that, as they carry around a lot of core beliefs that, you know, life is not meant to be happy. You know, yes. that's like this veil of tears. You have to suffer. <laughs> yes. Or, it's painful. <laughs> Or they're not even worthy. You know, it's, yes. you're not. You're not. You don't have a right to expect. You know. Yeah, and I'm here to say that is absolutely not true. I and I would stand up to anybody and say that, that is absolutely not true. Every one of us is completely 100% worthy, deserving beings, and absolutely everything is available to us. It's it's just a matter of you know sort of getting clear in your mind where, what you want and how you're going to go about getting it. But we worthiness does not have to be an issue. And then another thing we uh, have to deal with is sometimes the well-meaning advice and very frequently from our parents and things like that to aim low so yes. that in your goals so that you won't be disappointed and understand that aiming low is fear based that it, anybody that tells you well now you maybe you don't want to go that far because that's a little much and you'll be disappointed it, understand that they might be well meaning but they are fear based and any time you're working from fear you're sabotaging yourself absolutely i mean these are very definite clear statements that i'm making today but they they are the truth if you any time you work from fear don't even do anything until you can switch it and come from love come from a higher place and as as well meaning as parents and friends and all are you have to ask yourself is this are they coming from fear right now when they say this to me does this really serve me does it uh, does it feel right to me when they say this because we're all every one of us working our way out of fear thinking we're, every one of us are this is the time period we live in we're learning how to work our way out of fear and come from love and it's an effort it's a process and we have to be aware of it every minute I think it might even be safe to say that aiming low to avoid disappointment almost guarantees that you will be disappointed. Absolutely. I, I totally, because what, what are you focused on? Yes. Disappointment. So, of course, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> Absolutely. Gene, we now have a caller, and uh, this is Marvin. Marvin, thank you so much for calling today. Did you have a question or comment? Yes, I have a question. Okay. What do you do if you don't know what you want in your life? How can you figure it out? Well, that's you know what that's probably a common qu- uh, question. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you asked it because there's a lot of people who are probably wondering the same thing. Um, one thing that that can help you get started and in, in get, getting clearer about what you do want is start thinking about what you don't want. In other words, um, if you're saying to yourself, "Well, I don't want to get sick, and I don't want to be poor, you know, and I don't want to be bored," well, then what you if you reverse that, then you've told yourself already that what I want is 
is vibrant health and what I want is is to have plenty of money and prosperity and what I want is stimulation and growth and that begins the process then of getting clearer about what you do want and many times we, we speak in negatives we speak in oh I don't want it to rain and you know, et cetera, et cetera. We speak in a lot of negatives because we were taught to, to think about things we don't want. And it's, it's a part of being fear-based in our society. But anyway, um, then if you get, if you can just catch yourself thinking, well, I don't want that. Well, I don't want to be, you know, that kind of a situation. Well, then reverse it. Turn it around and say, well, what is it I want then? Do, what do you think? Can you, can you start doing some of that? Would that help get, get you clearer? I, I think that would help. My in my mind, I think what I want is like friends, family, money, religion. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I thought about it, those things are the things that are important to me, and and that's what I'm looking for in my life. Okay. Well, you know what? When you're ta- when you're saying friends, family, religion, and and fun, I think is what you said. Um, those those are all feelings, correct? I mean, that yes. there's a feeling that goes with it. Can you capture the feeling of that? What would it be? You know, if you think of friends and family, and is it connection and joy and it's happiness? It's happiness to me. It's happiness. It's enjoying life. Okay. So what would, what would it take for them for you to get into the feeling of enjoying life and, and think about enjoying each moment fully and completely, just really having fun in that moment, feeling light and, and happy in that moment, and, you know, just appreciating the sunshine and, and get into that state of being, um, do you think that that would help you then begin to gravitate toward more friends and family and spirituality and so forth? Yes, yes, I think that would help. I think it's my state of mind that that's what I have to get. I have to focus. I think I really okay. have to focus. Okay, well, that sounds good. I mean, as uh, you know, Rich had mentioned a little while ago, I don't know if, if it was on the air or not, but about that the mind is something that we have to learn to discipline. Just like we just work out our bodies, we have to also do the same thing with our mind that, you know, oftentimes we'll just be really happenstance in what we're thinking and just we're really actually defaulting back to what we were raised with, which doesn't usually work to bring us what we want. And then at the same time, um, you know, we're busy working out our body, but we're not doing the mental disciplines to really re- rearrange our thinking and, and create that which we are really looking for in life. So I think that's what you're talking about here is to remember each moment what, what you can appreciate and enjoy about that moment and feel grateful for, and that automatically brings your energy up to a higher level, and it's absolutely more fun. Make yeah. sense? Yes, I think you're right. I think you really helped me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling, Marvin. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Bye. Gene, uh, my wife and I are thinking about moving, and one thing that we have done is begun a list of things that we want in our house. Oh, that's great. Fireplace, big porch, yeah. yada, yada. Oh, that's great. Right, and the great thing about that is that uh, people sometimes try to keep their goals, I think, very vague. Um, they try the shotgun approach when yes. uh, what my experience is the reverse to get as specific as possible you get this very distinct very clear picture of what it is you want and it allows you to by process of elimination eliminate things you don't want and focus down and and you get this very specific idea and some people think it makes it more complicated, but my experience oh, no. is the reverse. Well, it's really interesting that you're saying that, but because it, when you're talking to your wife and the two of you are sharing what you want, there's a there's a feeling and a picture that emerges emerges from that, and that's what your your mind is beginning to gravitate toward that and create it. It's it's really a beautiful creative process when you share like that. And you can do with anything you want in your life. Anything. Gene. Um, Uh, That's it for today's show. Thank you once again. Today's show is called Commitment to Goals. Thank you. Go get them, folks. (laughs) This has been Positive Moments with Gene Walters Lucy, personal growth consultant, teacher, author, and lecturer. If you have comments or questions on any personal growth subject like universal law, dream interpretation, intuition, self-esteem, or self-empowerment, you can reach Jean at her website, www.spiritualtransformation.com, or call 314-991-8439 and leave a message. 
314-991-8439. I'm Richard Miller, and we'll see you for your next Positive Moments. Thank you.